The theme in this part of the series is still hypothesis testing, and I'm still looking at repeatable independent trials with binary outcomes. Binary means to only two types of outcomes, often called success and failure, and you either get zero or one success per trial. Something is different in this clip though. I'm taking my data from two sources. And the zero hypothesis is that these two sources describes the same thing, but with an unknown common success rate p. In that case we are looking at a free binomial setup. As earlier I am dividing the possibilities for p into a fine grained finite set, see for instance clip 19. The alternative hypothesis says that the success rate depends on which source the trial comes from. Apart from that, the data from source 1 is assumed independent from source 2 and independent internally in each source. So that's two separate binomial setups and two free parameters. P1, the success rate for trials from source 1, and P2, the success rate for trials from source 2. To reiterate, this hypothesis testing will be one free parameter versus two, rather than the earlier zero versus one parameter. You could also describe the zero hypothesis as a special case of the alternative, namely the case where p1 is equal to p2. The example I'm going to use is taken straight from YouTube. Videos here get uh, rated by users, though not everyone who views a video rates it. And I often think that the uh, rating intensity says more about the quality of the video than uh, exactly how people rate it. A video with high rating intensity makes people think and react, while a video with low intensity only has viewers casually strolling by. Each person can only rate a video once. Success for a given viewer, that is, the case of a viewer rating a video, can be assumed independent unless you have an incredibly detailed knowledge of your viewer base. The neat thing here is that YouTube keeps a tab of the number of views, i.e. trials, and the number of ratings, i.e. successes. There is a problem though, a person can view a video more than once and each view is registered. Also the one making the video can view it but not rate it, and when receiving comments these are usually seen by viewing the video. Still such events can in themselves be um, deemed rather independently distributed. In any case, without a time series of views and ratings one can't delve more into detail here and I'm anyhow trying to keep things simple. The number of multiple views or views by the video maker is assumed low compared to the total number of views. A touch of pragmatism may be just a trick to get anywhere at all. Uh, we can't expect that the true model should be in our arsenal each time we make a list of models. The important thing is to have a set of models sufficient to answer our questions without assuming too much. In this case, the question is, am I getting the same kind of rating intensity as the use of Egren? And if not, in which case way does the wind blow? Does it look like my viewers are more prone to rate my videos than his viewers are, or vice versa? Based on the number of ratings on the totality of his videos and mine, as well as the totality of views, I can now analyze this. The data was as follows. I had 311 ratings, which I'll call K1, distributed on 33,316 views, which I'll call N1. Vegrin had K2 equal to 1014 ratings distributed on N2 equal to 41714 views. The absurd rates are 0.93% for me and 2.43% for Vegrin and 1.77% in total. Doesn't look too good for Model 1 this, does it? So, back to the two models. 
model 1, the zero hypothesis is that we got one common success rate while model 2 says that there is two separate rates. Since we are contemplating source dependency, we cannot use the binomial distribution as the basis for the likelihood for model 1, as, the mod as model 2 would separate the data into two separate bins. The binomial distribution describes data collected in any ordering, and we can't freely take a success from one source and put it into another. Luckily, we can use the even easier approach in clip 16, where we found that for a success rate p, the probability of k successes in n trials in a given ordering was simply p to the power of k times 1 minus p to the power of n minus k. Now, under model 1, we've got k1 plus k2 ratings distributed on n1 plus n2 views. So for each possible value of p, we've got p to the power of 1325 times 1 minus p to the power of 73705. And the total data likelihood under model 1 is the sum of the likelihoods under each possible value of p times the prior probability of that value of p, which in the free binomial case is flat. Under model 2, we have that the data likelihood can be split into two parts. The data from source 1 is assumed independent from source 2, and so for each possible value of p1 and p2, the data likelihood is p1 to the power of k1 times 1 minus p1 to the power of n1 minus k1 times p2 to the power of k2 times 1 minus p2 to the power of n2 minus k2. We then need to sum over each possible value of p1 and p2. Long story short, if we manage the numerical problems of these large sums, you'll find that the base factor, that is the data likelihood under model 1, divided by the likelihood under model 2, is an astounding 1.43 times 10 to the power of minus 53. An enormous support for model 2. So I can be quite quite sure that the act of rating my videos is a different phenomenon from the act of rating vagrants. Of course, if I took the problems between the models and uh, what we know about how the data was collected a bit more serious, it could be that this base factor wouldn't be quite so small. But in this case, I do not think that these uncertainties are large enough to affect the conclusion, namely that there's something very very different between vagrants viewers or videos and mine. So let's see which way the wind blows then. Remember that the observed success rates were 0.93% and 2.43% respectively for me and Vagran. So that doesn't look too good for me. With the free binomial distribution for each source available, I can also plot the posterior distribution of the success rate for me and Vagrin using this theorem, like in clip 19. And they do look a bit different. Well, they're both bell-shaped, but they peak at different places, namely around the separate observed rates. The characteristic width of these distributions uh, seems much smaller than the difference between them. To go into more detail, I can also look at the probability distribution of the difference in rates p1 minus p2. For each possible difference, the probability of that difference is the sum of the probabilities of each combination of p1 and p2, such that p1 minus p2 is that difference. And when I calculate this, I get the following distribution, which interestingly is again bell-shaped. The distribution peaks at minus 1.50% and has a standard deviation of 0.1%. I can also go looking for an interval that covers at least 90% of the probability distribution, i.e. a 90% credibility interval. I find that uh, with at least 90% probability, the difference is between minus 1.69% and minus 1.33%. Okay.
Okay, so my videos definitely has a lower probability of getting rated than Vagrant's videos. Which is fine by me. Really, fine. I don't care. Good for Vagrant. Yeah. Why is this camera still rolling? <laughs>